we've made tremendous strides against cancer, what has been done already. We want to do better. The mortality rate from cancer hasn't decreased enough. It's decreased about 10% over the last 10 years, so 1 to 1.5% per year. That's not quite good enough. We want to do better. And people are dying because they relapse, their disease spreads to other sites. That's called metastasis. We want to block those processes. And it seems like cancer stem cells are essential for those processes. So it's like a caricature of a stem cell. And they give themselves away. And so we're trying to find the Achilles uh, heel of cancer. And I think that the cancer stem cell may be just that. For me, it always comes down to the individual, to the people that I've actually been involved in looking after and have had the privilege of seeing some very courageous people. And there was one patient I looked after when I was doing bone marrow transplant that was 20 years old. He had a disease called chronic myeloid leukemia, so it's kind of unusual to be, actually he was 21 years old, but kind of unusual to have that disease which has a normal um, incidence of, or when it's usually diagnosed, it's 52. 52 year old. Anyway, um, with this patient, he'd elected to have a bone marrow transplant from his brother because he was an athlete, he was a football player. He didn't want the disease to be in his body anymore. We said, well, there's a 75% chance of cure, but there's a 25% chance of dying. He took his chances. And when I was at his bedside, when I declared him dead with 40 people in the room, I thought there's got to be a better way. And that's what drove me back to the lab. So ideally what we'd like to do is catch cancer in its early phases, before these cancer stem cells have picked up all the properties that make them so powerful and so resistant to our current therapy. So what we study here at the University of California in San Diego are myeloproliferative disorders. And these disorders progress over a period of time to acute leukemia. Now what we've done here is found uh, that there's this pathway called the JAK2 pathway. And it turned out to be one of the most important arbiters of what a stem cell is going to become in the blood forming system. So it turned out in 2005 that there were four groups that found a mutation in that pathway that made it on or turn on all the time. And that was on in 97% of people that have a disease called polycythemia vera where you make too many red blood cells, 50% where you make too many platelets called essential thrombocythemia, and 50% with idiopathic myelofibrosis. Well, that seems like a lot of gobbledygook, but actually it's incredibly important because uh, what came along very quickly after were very specific inhibitors of that pathway. And what we found uh, together with a local drug company called Targetin is that we could selectively inhibit that pathway at the level of the stem cell. And then within a year of identifying the lead compound, the one we thought would go into the clinic, it was a clinical trial. So the blood cancers are ahead because that's where stem cells were first discovered, the hematopoietic or blood forming stem cell. There are a plethora of cancer stem cells that have now been identified, but how do we get rid of them? Because the cancer behaves in a very immature way, it's like a teenager that has gone astray, I think we can redirect cancer to behave properly if we understand more about these deviant pathways. And so if we study embryonic stem cells and understand how these pathways are turned on, how they're regulated, how they're important in specifying cell fate so that a cell is going to become one thing or another, then that's going to be incredibly important for all aspects of regenerative medicine, not just cancer. I think these induced pluripotent stem cells or IPS cells will tell us about whether these drugs that we're planning to use are going to be toxic alone or in combination because we're likely to need combinations of inhibitors. And similarly with human embryonic stem cells, if we add these genes that we think are important for causing cancer sequentially sequentially into that primitive cell, we may be able to generate cancer stem cells in a tissue culture dish and be able to make them in large amounts so that we're able to study these pathways more effectively. So we know that, or we have a better sense for when we go into people that we're not going to cause horrible toxicity. And the patients are driving that kind of collaborative effort because they expect something better and they have every right to expect something better.